Hello guys and welcome back to the channels. The 2024-25 season is set to begin. So it's time to share with you my official predictions. First off is Barnsley, who will have a different season due to the fact they sold they sold striker Devante Cole to the West Bromwich Albion. He was a key player, but Barnsley fans say he was awful, despite being their top goalscorer last season. The Tykes have signed Cora. Connor Hurahane from Derby, who was a crucial part in getting them promoted from League One. Next up is Birmingham. I don't need to explain why, but they'll walk the league. I'm sure everyone already knows. Next is Blackpool. They've lost some key players, including the ex-Orient title winner, Marvin Ekpiteta. They have managed to keep star striker Jordan Rhodes as a free agent, since Huddersfield decided not to keep him. Next up is Bolton Wanderers. How they have not been promoted yet is beyond me. They had their greatest chance of going up last season, and then they blow it. They will not get much bigger chances than this. The Whites lost the playoff final to Oxford United in dismal fashion which makes this season a task for Ian Ever of get promoted or else. His job is really on the line here. However, they have managed to keep all their, all their good players, including Dion Charles, Ricardo Santos, etc. They will finish second, but they will go down to the final day with the team I will state later in the video. Bristol Rovers have done some okay business in the transfer window, including Ruel Sotiri from Leighton Orient and Isaac Hutchinson from Walsall. They have kept hold of some decent players, including Chris Martin and Connor Taylor. They will finish 14th, outside of where competition is occurring towards the higher end of the table. Burton Albion have completed some incredible signings for their small budget, including Terence Van Kooten from Steve Nidge and Danilo Orsi, was the main man in Crawley's promotion. Before the transfer window, I would have put them in the relegation zone, but I think they'll finish 15th, as they still have work to do. Next up is Cambridge. I don't think they've done good enough business, but they have managed to keep young, exciting midfielder Glenn McConnell, who does have potential, to be fair, to be a Prem player at some point. They have Nor they have signed Norwich's young goalkeeper Vin Vicente Reyes, who may do well with stopping shots, but the players around him aren't good enough. They will finish twenty second, finally being relegated to League Two after multiple great escapes. Charlton Athletic have signed a player with who made lots of first team appearances in the Premier League, Luke Berry. Having been an important player in their only campaign in the Prem, they face one problem. Alfie, Alfie May has left Charlton, who was, the, who was the league's top scorer and practically kept the team in the league. After having a disappointing season in which was their turn to win the league, which, the, which is a chance they didn't take, they will have a finish outside the playoffs, I think. Seventh. Next up is Crawley Town, who got promoted from League Two as a surprise package. But it may be a step too far for a club like Crawley. They have lost too many players that took them into the third division for the first time in years. This limits their ability to compete with other teams around the relegation zone. Danilo Orsi, gone. Adam Campbell, gone. Lawrence Maguire, gone. There is only one place that they can finish, and that's the bottom of the league, 24th. Exeter City have done some okay business in the transfer window, including signing young Crystal Palace goalkeeper Joe Whitworth on loan, and experienced forward Josh McGuinness from Wigan. They will come 18th, just outside the relegation zone, but also they're not going to do too well. 
Huddersfield Town were last in the Premier League five years ago and were in the Championship playoff final two years ago, losing to Nottingham Forest. They have completed some incredible sidings in Herbie Kane, Las Sorensen, but they have also lost huge names in Jack Rodoni to Coventry for five million and Sorba Thomas to French League 1 side Nantes. They will finish third. Next up is the part I've been waiting for, Leighton Orient. The only way, the only way for the O's is up at the minute, as we just got promoted the season before the last one, and we're in a state in the National League just, just five years ago. We came 11th last season. I do think we'll, we, we will continue building, but I think due to the insane amount of competition we'll have to deal we'll have to deal with we mean we'll finish one place lower 12th we have signed Lewis Warrington from Everton which Toffee's fans thinks it's an unbelief it's unbelievable that they've let him go to a lower league side especially as they thought he could break into the first team at Everton Lincoln City had average form throughout the middle of last season, but towards the end they absolutely mauled everyone, winning by five plus goals for three matches in a row. As long as they've got Jack Moylan, the league is not safe. I think they'll come ninth, the only dark horse team to, that can really slide through the other playoff contenders. I don't think they have the consistency to finish in the playoffs, however. Mansfield Town came third in League Two, earning them promotion after 11 years in the bottom professional division of English football. They made a statement signing that, that they are here to compete, not just to say hello and go back down. They have signed Keanu Bacchus from Scottish Premiership side St Mirren and helped steer them to fourth, which is, which is the highest finish in their history. Is the squad ready for League One? That's the question. That's why I'm going to put them in 19th. Northampton Town have not had a great summer. They've lost key players in Sam Shering to MK Dons, Lewis Apere to Stevenage for free. I don't think they can replicate the incredible season they had last year. They all have a case of second season syndrome, and finished top of the bottom four in 21st, sending them down to League Two. Peterborough United have been raided this summer due to their failure of getting promoted and losing as early as the playoff semi-finals. Ronnie Edwards has gone to Southampton, Harrison Burrows has gone to Sheffield United, star striker Johnson Clark Harris is off to Rotherham, but, but thanks to the loss of several key players, I think they'll finish 10th, as they don't have the same squad as last season. They did make some good signings, including, um, forgive me if I get this wrong, but Mah Mahamad Mahamadou Suso on loan from Man City. They have also made a couple signings from non-league, which is Peterborough signings, and they'll end up cooking League One. Reading have been falling apart around them as a football club, as owner Dai Yong has stopped funding the club. Despite all this, Ruben Sellers did an amazing job and kept them up. Takeover talk is all over the news for Reading at the minute, which is building their fans hope. Especially with an agreement potentially coming soon. They will finish 16th, as they cannot be fixed straight away as the damage done by Dai Yong can't be reversed that quickly. Rotherham United have formed a League One super team, including arrivals of Johnson Clark Harris from Peterborough. The title winners of League One from last season, Sean Raggett and Joe Rafferty from Pompey, and Sheffield Wednesday keeper Cameron Dawson. All that with Steve Evans as manager who ditched Stevenage to rebuild a fallen Rotherham team. The problem with teams signing the biggest names that they can afford is that none of the players will know each other, which is crucial for player communications and relationships. 
Because of this, I think they're going to finish fourth, but they are going to be the playoff winners. Shrewsbury Town have lost their striker, Dan Udo, who kept them in the division as long as they had. Tom Bayliss also had creativity, but has also left the club. They will finish 23rd. Their lack of scoring will cost them this year, I think. Stevenage have made some quality signings in Charlie Good on loan from Brentford, and Dan Kemp from MK Dons. They also hired a new manager, the assistant coach Alex Ravel. He will not be as good as Steve Evans ever, ever was. He won't even compare. And that's why I've put them 20th. Only just avoiding relegation. Stockport County absolutely crushed League 2 last term, and they have not lost any of their key players. But And they'll also do well for themselves. Mid-table finish, 13th. Wigan Athletic kept all their big names they had from last season, including super goalkeeper Sam Tickle. Without their points deduction last season, don't forget, they would have finished 12th. They will want to work on this and challenge the top end of the table. They will finish 6th though, inside the playoffs, which I think their players are going to massively improve from last season with more confidence of promotion, but I think they'll only make the semis. Now, the most famous name here, Wrexham. They were promoted to League One last season off the back of back-to-back -back promotions from non-league into the third division. Everyone thinks Wrexham will get a third, a third promotion in a row, but I can see them struggling a bit this season. They will finish 16th as there is room for growth. There is Paul Marlin, but who else is there? Lastly, but not least, Wickham Wanderers. They have recently been taken over by Kazakhstan billionaire, which could mean the future of the club is near the Premier League, or, or, or they could just sink. They have signed key Shrewsbury man Daniel Udo, Nathan Bishop on loan from Sunderland, as a replacement for Max Striak, who went to Crow and Tyreek Baconson from Sheffield Wednesday. They will finish 13th, but they will. this is a growing point for Wickham, I think. And those were my predictions! You may or may not agree. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Sunday.